Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at a very special lens from Wheelchox, it's the Wheelchox AF 75mm f1.2 Pro, the first lens from Wheelchox that has a Pro badge on it. Before we start, just a quick disclaimer, Wheelchox sent me the sample that I use in this review and I do not have to return it to them after I finish this review, but this is pretty much the same as most other review samples that I receive. Wheelchox, they do not have any input on what I'm going to say in this review and they also don't even get a chance to watch this review before I publish it. The lens I'm holding here is the Wheelchox AF 75mm f1.2 XF. This lens is designed for Fujifilm x mount camera, but Wheelchox told me it will be available for other APS-C camera mount in the near future and the optical formula and the design of the lens should be pretty much the same for all the other future mounts that will be available. So even though I'm reviewing the Fuji XF version in this review, but most of the things that I'm going to say should also apply to the other versions as well. The price of this lens is 550 US dollar, so it is quite a bit more expensive than the typical Wheelchox APS-C lenses, which are usually around $300-$450, but we will find out whether it's worth the extra money very soon. It is a pretty large lens and the weight of this lens is 670 gram. So yeah, it's quite large and heavy if you compare it to the other typical Fuji Prime lenses. It's even heavier than my X-T3, which I'm using for this review. But then 75mm f1.2 is really not a typical lens. Focal length equivalent is around 112mm and f1.2 is also a very fast aperture. So it's understandable why the size and weight of this lens is more like a zoom lens rather than a typical prime lens. The full frame equivalent 112 0.5mm focal length is kind of like in the middle of two classic portrait focal length, 85mm and 135mm. With the large f1.2 aperture, you can easily create some shallow depth of field photos. Another reason why it's quite heavy is because this lens has a very solid metal construction. While the lens hood and the lens cap are made of plastic, the lens itself is made of metal and it feels really solid and very nice quality. The focus ring is quite large and it's also very smooth as well. The build quality of this lens definitely matches the pro title that Wheelchox gave to this lens. But just being made of metal isn't really enough for Wheelchox to call it a pro lens. After all, pretty much all the Wheelchox lenses are made of metal as well. On Wheelchox website, they said this lens has a professional level waterproof and dustproof structural design. I think by waterproof, they actually mean weatherproof as I don't think you can submerge this lens underwater and still expect it to continue to work. So definitely don't try it. But the lens does have a good number of rubber seals on it, including one on the lens mount, and there are many other inside the lens to protect the lens against water drops and dust. I haven't used the lens under rain, but I did take it to a beach and shot a few hours at the beach, and there were quite a bit of sand end up on the lens body but it doesn't seem to cause any issues at all. The lens still works perfectly fine. The focus ring, the AF, MF switch all continue to function very well with no problems at all. At the front of the lens, we have the 77mm front filter thread. And then at the back, there is a USB-C port for firmware update. I really like how Wheelchox they put the USB-C port at the lens mount, so you can just attach a USB cable very easily to the lens without having to use any USB dock, and it also doesn't need any extra rubber cover to cover the port. Now let's talk about autofocus. The autofocus is very quiet with this 75mm lens. No matter you are shooting photo or video, the lens is very quiet. When shooting static subjects, the accuracy appears to be excellent as well, and it works well with face detection. When I'm refocusing on another subject that is not dramatically different to where my previous focus distance is, the autofocus is quick and relatively smooth as well. However, I also have some bad news. When I need to change the focus distance 
very dramatically, say from very close distance to far distance. What I notice is quite often, you will notice the lens seems to hesitate a bit. It may hunt a little bit forward and backward and then take a little bit of time to get the focus completely correct. So that makes the autofocus speed not really the fastest in general and also a little bit annoying when you see the focus hunting. Now, I was wondering if it's because my camera, which is the X-T3, one of the latest firmware, maybe because it's not the latest camera, but it seems other reviewers or users that has the latest Fuji camera like the X-H2S or X-T5, they also have similar problem. So I think it's not because of my camera. I would be curious to see if Viewtrox can make any improvement via a firmware update because they seem to be pretty good at releasing firmware update for their lenses. At least maybe to reduce the focus hunting a little bit. I don't really mind if it's a little bit slow to be honest. I just like to see if they can get rid of or at least minimize the amount of focus hunting. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 88 centimeter or about 35 inches. So it's not very close, but because of its long focal length, the maximum magnification is still okay at 0.1 time. Sharpness when shooting photo at the minimum focus distance is pretty good even at f1.2. And because of the long focal length and also the large f1.2 aperture, you can just melt the background completely when you are shooting close-up photos. Now let's have a look at the sharpness. All these test photos were shot using my Fuji X-T3. Look at the center of the photo. At f1.2, the center sharpness is pretty decent. I won't call it excellent, but I think it is really good for a f1.2 lens at f1.2. And the thing is, once I stop down the lens slightly to f1.4, then the center sharpness becomes really good. Stopping down to f2 would give you a little bit more center sharpness, but I think even at f1.4, the center sharpness is already excellent. And the sharpness remains similar until f11 when diffraction starting to decrease the sharpness. And now let's look at the corner. At f1.2, the corner is slightly soft, but I would say I'm still pretty impressed for an f1.2 lens at the maximum aperture. And the contrast at the corner is still decent as well. Stopping down the lens to f1.4, the corner sharpness will have some noticeable improvement. The corner sharpness would continue to improve if you stop down the lens further at f4. It becomes really good and continue like that until diffraction kicks in at around f11. The corner sharpness results that we just saw were from the photos that I focused at the center of the photo. If I focus at the corner of the frame, then the corner sharpness will improve a little bit, but I won't say there is a huge difference. So it suggests the lens only has a very small amount of field curvature. For a fast, short telephoto lens, it is very easy to create shallow depth of field photos. And this is probably one of the biggest reasons why people will be interested in buying this lens and just want to blur the background. So bokeh is very important for a lens like this. The bokeh from this Vuitrox lens is pretty decent. At the maximum aperture f1.2, while there is a little bit of cat's eye bokeh near the corner, overall bokeh is smooth and not nervous at all. When stopped down to f2.8, f4, bokeh balls still remains pretty round. When shooting real world photos, I find the dissolved background also looks very pleasant. So if you want beautiful soft bokeh for your APS-C camera, you should be very happy with this Wheelchalks lens. For a f1.2 lens, I was really expecting to see a lot of vignetting when shooting at the maximum aperture. But if you look at my test photo, you can see vignetting, but the amount is much better than I thought it would be at f1.2. Stopping down the lens would gradually minimize the amount of vignetting. By f4, there is virtually no vignetting at all. But to be honest, even at f2, there is only very minimal amount of vignetting that is visible even in this plain wall test photo. When I was checking my image sharpness test photos, 
one thing I noticed is I don't really see any noticeable chromatic aberration. Even though my test chart photos, they are pretty high contrast and they were strong, harsh sunlight that is shining onto those test charts. There's no nasty color fringing at all. And then I look at my other test photos and some other real world photos, I also don't see much chromatic aberration at all. Definitely very impressed by that, especially this is a really fast f1.2 lens and usually fast lens would give us quite a bit of chromatic aberration, but this doesn't happen with this Wilcox lens. Short telephoto prime lens usually don't have too much distortion and with this Wilcox 75mm f1.2 lens, I see really minimal amount of distortion. Even if we look at this brick wall test photo, if you look at the top edge of the photo, there is virtually no distortion at all. So this is very nice. All the recent Wilcox lenses that I've tested has really good lens flare performance. Among all the newer third party lens manufacturers, I feel Wilcox lens flare performance is definitely one of the best. And now this time with this new 75mm f1.2 lens, I can see a bit of lens flare and ghosting when shooting directly into a bright light source and contrast would drop a little bit. It's not terrible, it's far from it. It's better than most lenses from most other Chinese optics companies. But at the same time, it's also not Wilcox's best as some Wilcox lenses have better lens flare performance than this lens. I'm guessing the reason is that this lens has a pretty complex 16 element design, so it probably has a little bit of negative impact on the lens flare performance. So overall, I think the lens flare performance of this lens is good, but not perfect. Okay, now let's have a look at the sun stars from this Vuechox lens. You need to stop down the lens to around f8 to see sun stars in the photos. Stop down to f11, the sun stars becomes sharper. And when you shoot at the minimum aperture f16, the sun stars looks okay to me. I said okay because, well, it's reasonably sharp, but the length of the sun star tails are not very even. So I think some people may be very happy with it, but for myself, I would like the sun stars to be a little bit sharper. And now we'll have a look at this lens corner performance. At f1.2, the amount of corner at the corner is surprisingly small. I thought I would see some really ugly butterfly shaped comma at the corner, but turns out the bright light source near the corner looks very okay. I'm quite surprised by that to be honest. So this could be a good lens for people who want a short telephoto lens for astrophotography. If you are interested in using this lens for videography, unlike most other Wilcox lenses, the aperture ring on this lens is not degraded. Autofocus motor noise is very minimal, so you shouldn't hear any autofocus noise in your video. But using continuous autofocus during video recording do not always give us the very smooth focus transition. The lens also has some pretty noticeable focus breathing. So overall, I think this is not really a lens that is designed for videographers unless you want to keep the focus unchanged during recording. This Wilcox lens is quite a special lens. This is the first lens the company put a pro badge on it, which means this lens is not really targeting the average consumer users. It's targeting the more demanding pro users, and because of that, there will be higher expectations for this lens. And I think Wilcox has mostly delivered that to us. Image quality is excellent even at the maximum aperture f1.2, which is not the easiest thing to do, but somehow Wilcox managed to do that. Build quality is also excellent, very solid metal construction, and it does feel very nice when I hold it and shoot photos with it. Weather sealing is also a must for pro users, and Wilcox didn't forget about it. My only main complaint about this lens would be its autofocus performance. Well, it works and it's quiet, but 
the amount of focus hunting I see is a bit distracting and it does also slow down the autofocus speed a bit. Seeing the focus hunting does make me wonder if the lens managed to nail the focus or not even though the result is usually very good. If you are a portrait photographer, I don't think you will have any real issue with this lens but if you shoot events or any kind of photos that your subject will be moving quite a bit constantly then at least right now with the initial firmware I don't have full confidence I really hope Realtalks can improve the autofocus performance in the future while firmware update and if Fieldtrox do release a new firmware that address the autofocus issue, I would definitely test it again. I would drop a comment below and let you guys know if it makes any difference. So depends on what kind of photographer you are. If you don't need to shoot fast moving subjects, then this Fieldtrox 75mm f1.2 lens is an excellent lens overall with a very attractive price tag. If you need to shoot fast moving subjects, I may wait a bit and see if Viewtrox can improve the autofocus performance while firmware update later. If they manage to do that, then this 75 f1.2 lens is a pretty much perfect lens for APS-C shooters. By the way, you should also check out my review of the Viewtrox AF 30mm f1.4 lens which is an excellent fast wide-angle lens from Viewtrox.